Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Anbiya'i wa al-Mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaykum Quran Weekly I'm going to recite an ayah at the beginning of this small session uh, So you have some perspective of what I'm going to share with you A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim uh, Walamma warada ma'a madiyan Wajada alayhi ummatan minal nasi yasqoon Wa wajada min dunihi mumra'atayni tathudan Qala ma khatbukuma Qala ta la nasqi hatta yustil al-ri'a Wa abuna shaykhun kabir Allah Azza wa Jal talks about Musa alayhi salam's amazing journey in Surah Al-Qasas, among other places. And one of the things he tells us in Surah Al-Qasas is that when he ran away from Egypt after having accidentally killed a person by punching him, uh, he finally reached the, the waters of Madian. And he pursued the waters of Madian and finds a bunch of people, you know, giving water to their sheep there. And besides them, to the, you know, you could say on top of the hill almost, he sees two women. Tathudan, that they're pulling on, the, the word used, وَجَدَ مِن دُونِهِ مُمْرَأَتَيْنِ Tathudan, he, he saw two women there that are pulling or tugging at their sheep. Like they're having this tug-of-war match with their sheep, where they're not really winning. And it looked really weird to him from a distance, that these women are struggling with their animals in this way, while everybody else is comfortably feeding their animals at the water. So he went up to them and said, قَالَ مَا خَطْبُكُمَ He said, what's your problem? What's going on here? You know, what's the deal? This is already is a huge lesson. You know, we are supposed to have hayad, men are supposed to have modesty and they're supposed to, you know, guard their, their, their tongue and their eyes and things like that. But when someone's in trouble or somebody's having trouble, there's nothing wrong with you going and saying, can I be of service? What's going on here? Uh, but you have to mind yourself, right? So he didn't go and have an elaborate conversation and try to make small talk with them. He just went and said, ma khatbukuma, what's, what's going on with both of you? And they responded, qalata la nasqi hatta yustil ri'a. They said, We're not, we can't feed our animals until the entire flock of everybody else is done. There's men down there, apparently they don't have a lot of courtesy, so they're feeding their animals and they won't give us room. We don't want to rub elbows with them and go and feed our animals, so we're going to wait until they're all done and all gone, even if it takes us all afternoon, and eventually we'll uh, you know, give our sheep and our goats, etc. some water. Of course, the, the goats and sheep are not that understanding, and they don't understand these laws, so the, the animal sees the water and it wants to rush towards it, and they have to constantly pull back on them. I bring this up because this is a really cool example in the Qur'an of women in the workplace. They explained that Abuna Shaykhun Kabir, they said our father's an old man. And because he's old, it's understood, it's in between the lines that he's not able to work anymore. He's not able to you know, tend to the animals and take care of the, the expenses of the household and all, everything else. And he only has daughters, he's got two girls. And you know what? They have to go out there and work. This is a reality for so many people because of their economic situation, their unique family situation, be it divorce, be it the death of a husband, be it the only daughters that are in a household taking care of the family, old parents, they have to go out in the workforce. It's not something that our deen forbids. It's something that, our, that Quran itself talks about. But there are ethics mentioned. These girls, what's remarkable about them, the few things Allah tells us about them in Surah Al-Qasas are very telling, a principle of haya. Because you're going to be at the workforce, necessarily situations will come that it might be convenient to compromise your standards. Uh, standards of hayat, standards of shame, standards of modesty. But so long as you stick to your principles, you can still get work done. It might be inconvenient, just like they were inconvenienced. But you have to, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to, your principles cannot move. They cannot budge. So they did that. And actually Musa salam didn't even ask them, so may I take your animals and help you out? Allah says, فَسَقَى لَهُمَا <laughs> He just grabbed them and fed them and brought them back ثُمَّ تَوَلَّا إِلَى الظِّلِّ Then he sat back down in the shade. So these, these women, and this, this brief account of Musa salam interacting with these women is extremely telling about a situation that will still occur and will always be occurring in the future. And that is of our sisters, our daughters, our, our mothers that might have to be in the workforce and when they do, how are they to carry themselves? Understand that when they were talking to Musa, they didn't know he's a prophet. So they dealt with him like they would deal with any other man. They, they were really straight up and abrupt with him. And they told him, we can't, we're not going down there until these men are done. Hatta yustil al ri'a. And don't get any ideas. Well, Abuna Shaykhun Kabir. Our dad is a big Shaykh. So smart. Because the word Shaykh in Arabic means old, old man. So one way they're saying our father is a very old man. But the word Shaykh in Arabic also means someone who enjoys a lot of heavy social status. So the, on the other hand, they're saying, hey, you, you seem like a big guy. But wait, hold on a second. Before you get any ideas, our dad, he's a really big sheikh, okay? So just because we're working here doesn't mean that we don't have backup. We have a big sheikh at home, subhanAllah. So they were able to carry themselves in this confident, wonderful way. I praise that I'm able to, I, I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that I'm able to raise daughters that are confident like that, that have their haya, 
um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, they're able to engage with the outside world in a healthy, meaningful way, where they're, they're, and that, that me as a father do a good enough job like that man did, where he can send his daughters out, knowing that these guys are not very courteous to women. He can send them out and know they can handle themselves. This is very powerful, right? That he had enough confidence in them that he can handle themselves. And if somebody listens to justice and says, well, these girls must have been tomboys. They must have been really outgoing, like boyish personalities where they're not very shy. I mean, the next ayah tells us, وَجَاءَتْ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحْيَا One of them came back walking shyly. Allah mentions her shyness when she's walking towards Musa alayhi salam. إِنَّ أَبِي يَدْعُوكَ No doubt my dad's the one calling you. <laughs> she tells him, my dad's calling you. She wants to pay you for what, you know, the help you did for us. But she came and she had modesty, she had shyness. So Allah acknowledges on the one hand their confidence, the fact that they're outgoing, the fact that they're being trusted by their dad to deal with the outside world. On the other hand, the quality of shyness is highlighted when they're dealing with a, with a non-mahram man. So it's a very beautiful you know, story that you know, in such small words highlights some of the very powerful ethics and moral principles that guide our interactions in the workforce. May Allah Azza wa guide the men and women uh, that are in the workforce and help them never compromise their principles when they are there. Barakallahu li walakum. Wassalamu alaikum Quran Weekly.